gentlemen, can you tell me a little bit about this museum and how you got started in the raison d'etre to get you to here? So uh, basically the Warbirds of Glory Museum was founded in 2013 and we recovered a B-25 known as Sandbar Mitchell that crashed back in June 27th of 1969 up in Fairbanks, Alaska and that airplane was abandoned up there for 44 years. While I was in college I knew that airplane was up there and we worked hard, got the fundraising, got the necessary parts to save Sandbar Mitchell and uh, we went up there and recovered it and brought it back down to uh, Michigan for restoration and most importantly it was the start and the main centerpiece of the museum and our student apprenticeship program. The youth mentorship program we have is uh, styled off of one-on-one -on -one apprenticeship. So you have the opportunity to walk, work alongside me and Patrick or some of the other uh, more experienced volunteers and you are hands-on getting dirty with the airplane. So you start off with simple tasks, you know, we do a lot of paint stripping and disassembly and then you start working your way up into sheet metal, riveting and everything you need to become the ambassador and carry the torch for this airplane into the future. A lot of kids these days, you know, you think, or I should say a lot of the older crew think that kids don't want to work on this kind of stuff, but I would respectfully disagree with that and say that if you give kids the opportunity to work on it and show them the outlet and then let them lead their own way with this, they take it and run. And we've had some very successful students come through it. My four roommates all through college, we all met through Warbirds of Glory. I'm a successful aerospace engineer. One is aviation maintenance, one is flying. We have another one working for the Air Force. And you started what, at the age of 12? Of 12 or 13, yes. And Logan was 15 years old and actually the youngest member of the recovery team um, that came up to Fairbanks, Alaska with us to get the airplane. How was the success in the restoration? What percent are you? Where is the current uh, aircraft located, et cetera? Uh, the big news for the museum is we are actually moving to the Oakland Southwest Airport. August 1st, we actually get uh, our new keys to the new hangar. So it's going to be a much larger facility to be able to continue the restoration of the airplane, as well as having a posted address with posted hours for the general public to be able to come and actually see the restoration and view the museum. Our goal is to have Sandbar Mitchell on its landing gear by 2025, and we're wow. on track to do that. So basically, you know, the center section was one of the biggest pieces that we brought back from Alaska. A lot of the other parts of the aircraft that were damaged and pieces cut off, over the years we actually received a lot of that back and parts from the original glass nose have been incorporated into our restored glass nose. Same thing with the forward fuselage, aft fuselage, etc. We're on track for 2025 as long as we can continue to get the support. Speaking of the center section, a critical comp component of that is you're replacing parts, but you figured out an interesting way to recycle them. Yes, so my mother, she's our director of arts and graphic design at the museum. We are using these panels that we can, you know, sell off of you, and these came from the airplane, and they're all hand-painted. And uh, this is Flash Gordon's girlfriend, which was the official squadron art for the 488th. And this is all stuff from Sandbar's center section that uh, failed inspection for either you know damage from the landing accident or actually from corrosion because people did cut into the aircraft which allowed moisture to get into the center section. So we thought what a better way than to fundraise is to basically make these panels and let someone actually have a piece of a B-25 with some really unique art. And 100% of it goes to help fund the restoration of Sandbar Mitchell.